Father, I truly do thank you tonight. You are the God of all of our days. You are with us in the good times and in the bad. And I'm asking right now, Father God, that your angelic host move throughout these chairs this night. And they do a perfect work, Father God. I ask the Holy Spirit be evident in this place tonight. Because, Father God, we know without your Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. And Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this sanctuary. And we give you full permission to do whatever it is that God has sent you forth to do to this congregation. And we thank you, Jesus, for the cross, for your blood, and forever interceding for us. And Father, tonight I'm asking that you come and in all your might and all your power and all your glory, and you do a great and a mighty works <clears throat> within these people. And Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you realize this song service was a story. Your love for God and God's love for you. God dictated the song service this morning and this evening. And I know you're used to one thing, but you know we flow with what God wants and not what we're used to. And if you really sang the songs and listened to the words you were singing, you know that God is trying to minister to you. And you were telling God what you thought of him. And if you didn't understand that, well, then you can ask them for a list of the songs you go home and listen to them <laughs> and get out of them what you should have gotten out of them here. Amen. Amen. I, um, God had given me one word, but I changed it three quarters away through it, and, and I decided to give this. Because I think this is important that the body of Christ hears this. Because the body of Christ is going through a, a lot of turmoil right now, a lot of changes. Um, there's things happening you don't understand. And we just need to understand that God is with us in all things. And when God starts taking us higher, the devil's right there trying to tear us down. And we need to understand that God already knew this, that he was going to be there. And he made a way for us to get through the trauma and the ordeals that Satan sends our way. Some of us make our own trauma, you know. And some of us make our own ordeals. So let's, let's start changing the way we live, the way we talk. And let's just start doing it and being what God would have us to be. Uh, you know, I'm just hearing God say there's a great onslaught of the enemy coming even stronger than what he's already sent. And he said, are you going to be able, to, are you going to be ready to combat this gross darkness that's going to come after you? I want you to think about that. Not just now, but I want you to keep thinking about that and understand that God has forewarned us that the enemy is on the prowl greater than ever. All right, let's go into this teaching. God is healing your trauma. The Lord showed me through three dreams in this last week that from now till the end of 2021, he will be dealing with the trauma people have been carrying from 2020 in the post-pandemic world. I'm surprised as I read what they're writing about what the pandemic has done to people. It has totally devastated them. The ones that weren't in, weren't in Christ and are still not in Christ, the pandemic just about took them out. That's a shame because God it was, spoke peace to us during the whole thing. All right, stuck in life, devastating moments. I saw his heart for those who have been through the valley of the shadow of death. See that? I saw the heart. I saw his heart, God's heart, for those who have been through the valley of the shadow of death. And while they are alive physically, they've been in survival mode spiritually and emotionally ever since. Some of you can say amen to that. 
I felt his vindication over the events that have caused people to fall into collapse and absolute breakdown and who are now feeling the after effects that they can't seem to shake or move on from. I saw these people stuck in a memory of a moment in time that was on repeat, which they were chained and slaved to. In other words, one, one event that happened in your life just keeps playing over and over and over again. These were livelihood destroying, life devastating moments. I saw a threshold in the spirit and the church was almost in the crossover, but trauma had caused them to lie down in defeat. This was the enemy's plan all along, to disable them before a critical moment of breakthrough. God is picking the church up from the battlefield floor. Right now and throughout the rest of the year, God is picking the church up from the battlefield floor and showing her how to live and thrive in a world in crisis and how to be effective in it. He is pouring his healing salve on those who have been beyond crushed and felt beyond hope. Now listen to what you're reading. He is restoring those who have even walked away from him due to the trauma. And he is visiting those who have felt lost and abandoned in a year of chaos and change. God is bringing people into wholeness who have experienced this high-level trauma by severing ties and shutting doors and trigger points, reversing those effects and giving you a fresh wind. God is bringing people, you all, into wholeness who have experienced this high-level trauma. How? By severing ties and shutting doors and trigger points, reversing its effects and giving you a fresh wind. Deliverance from spiritual trauma. In the first dream, I saw a woman that looked disfigured and aged, even though underneath I could tell she was young. Her posture and countenance were sickly and unhealthy. Her eyes were filled with deep grief, despair, and hopelessness. She was tormented and not in her right mind. Then I saw it. A demonic being was latched onto the back of her head and back, constantly whispering into her ear. It was like a 24-7 newscast of lies, reminding her of past wounds and hurts and speaking to her about who was against her. I think some of you can relate to that. In the dream, I walked over to the woman and asked, who was this creature on you? And she replied, excuse me, the trauma of 2020 and the noise of the pandemic. Then without thinking, I said, this is not who you are and picked up that creature and threw it away. The woman instantly started to change in her appearance. She sh slowly began to look younger, happier, and healthy again. When I asked the Lord what this was, he said that this was the effects of spiritual trauma that had come through the religious, political, and Jezebel spirits in 2020. This woman represented many people who have been caught up in the showdown of the battle of the second heavens and have become casualties of war. Let's read that part again. This woman represented many people who have been caught up in the showdown of the battle of the second heavens and have become casualties of war. I'm not saying it was wrong to fight. More should speak up and stand up, but these were the ones who had been blindsided by the times and caught up in the storm, the division, the battle of flesh and blood, and it had caused a deep unrest and a deep trauma. The fighting had caused a tormenting spirit to enter in and take them out. God is dealing with the spiritual trauma in two ways like I did in a dream, through truth and deliverance. He's dealing with truth and deliverance. We must partner with God in reinstating truth where there have been lies and confusion spread by media, demonic social justice initiatives and ideals contrary to the heart of God. You know, we have to start dealing with the wrong that's going on in our world right now. 
Then straight, straight up, just remove the demonic assignment. We have to deal with these things and then remove the demonic assignment. How do we do that? We rebuke it and command it to leave. We give it no room or access to muddy our spiritual gateway or confuse our flow. See, that sounds so simple, doesn't it? But it is not simple. The devil's just not going to leave because you command him to leave. He's going to have to know that you mean what you say when you tell him he has to leave. Is he going to come back? Yes, he's going to come back. He's going to be, come back stronger than, than when he was when he left because he's going to bring reinforcements with him because he realized he couldn't do it by himself. I mean, that's just what God just said. Also, we must get filled up again. Remember, God filled us up again the other one of the services here recently. Dryness leads many to emptiness, which makes it easy for spiritual trauma to take place. Be freed and delivered now in Jesus' name. It said, we must get filled up again. Dryness leads many to emptiness, which makes it easy for spiritual trauma to take place. So you constantly have to be talking to the Father. You constantly have to be in his presence because you can't afford to dry up. You, the spirit has to be constantly moving through you. In Psalm 103, verse 2 through 5, says, Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget all, not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love. And compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Let's read that scripture again because that's the scripture you should have embedded in your spirit. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. See all the good things God wants to, wants to do for us as we praise him in the storm. Not after the storm's over, but in the midst of the storm. Our emotional trauma reversal. In the second dream, I was in a church service where people were bringing random items that they had been carrying and placing them on the stage. Then I invited people to come up if they wanted prayer. And as I was praying for people, crazy healing started taking place, especially healing of emotions and wounds. It felt like the bomb of Gilead and the oil of gladness were working to bring people to health in their minds and emotions. And as you do deliverance, you know that there, there's a lot of healing of emotions and wounds that bring those spirits in there. All right, she goes on to say PTSD was being healed, anxiety was being healed, depression was being healed, emotional lethargy and terrorness were being healed, bipolar disorder was being healed, confusion was being healed, and minds were made clear. Anger and sa sadness were leaving, sleep disruption and disorders broke off, nightmares and torment were leaving, and deep-seated trauma went in a, went in a moment. This is what God is so desiring to do because really these are the things that should be in the people that's in the world, but these are the things that are still in the people sitting in the house of God that has to be taken out. There's been too much of the word being preached, already being preached, and there's too much anointing that's already been shed abroad in here that the people should not be bound up in any of these things, but they still are. Something is missing. All right, so then she says, then joy hit the altar and people were laughing and screaming and happiness and relief. Then I woke up and I felt it. This spoke to me that we are in a time of exchanging what we have been carrying, baggage, bondages, painful memories, loss, and the trauma that has caused them. As we take them to the altar, God is going to exchange them for joy and beauty for ashes. 
You can't hold on to this junk. You have to let it go. Because if you don't let it go, it's going to destroy you. And what, what did she say here? As we take them to the altar, God is going to exchange them for joy and beauty for ashes. And Luke 10, 34 says, He stooped down and gave him first aid, pouring olive oil on his wounds, which is trauma, disinfecting them with wine and banishing them to stop the bleeding. Lifting him up, he placed him on his own donkey and brought him to an inn. Then he took from his donkey and carried him to a room for the night. This was a man that was beaten along the wayside and the prophet stopped and helped him. We need to do the very same thing. Let's read that scripture again. He stooped down and gave him first aid, pouring olive oil on his wounds, which is the trauma, disinfecting them with wine and banishing them to stop the bleeding. Lifting him up, he placed him on his own donkey. He didn't send somebody else to do it. He lifted him up on his own donkey and brought him to an inn. Then he took him from his donkey and carried him to a room for the night. He, healing physical trauma and holistic restoration. Well, I'm going to stop there and ask you, are you truly ready to be a servant for God? And are you truly ready to go forth and minister to the brokenhearted? Or are you st still too devastated by the things that are going on in your own life and around about you that you can't see when somebody else has a need? God's asking you this question. He wants you to think about this. Are we so caught up in what's going in our own personal lives and around about us that we really can't see what's going on with other people's lives and how the enemy is destroying them? We need to get that very clear in our, our spirits right now. Yes, we're all going to go through traumas. You know, we just are. But we are not supposed to get so caught up in that trauma that we cannot see beyond that trauma to help other people be set free. As you read the word, Jesus was always in a trauma of some sort. But he didn't let that take him down. He went ahead and he ministered God's word. He ministered to the people. He healed the people. All right. The brokenhearted were brought forth. You can be going through the biggest valley that you've ever gone through in your life and still be anointed of God and still do the works God's called you for it to do. You are mm -hmm. not supposed to sitting around and saying, oh, poor me, God, I can't go minister to anybody else because after all, I'm going through, going through my own death sentence here. We have to put all that aside and we have to go ahead and minister to the other people. Right? I'm hearing God say, if truth were known, there's very few in the body of Christ who can do that. And it's destroying the anointing in my houses. In the third, in the third dream, I was worshiping with three friends who are amazing psalmists. We weren't in a church building, but a lobby of a hotel or building. We were just worshiping and ministering to people as they walked by. We were prophesying and, pray, and praying into family restoration and breaking trauma off of families, marriages, and children. We were prophesying that there would be a wave of recompense coming to families that had been through generational trauma for years. But then 2020 hit and it disassembled what was already shaky. If your house was already shaky when 2020 hit, it just totally took it out. I prophesied trauma is going to turn into legacy. Trauma is going to turn into legacy. As I said that, an elderly woman walked over to us and asked us to pray for her. My friend asked what was wrong, and she went through a long list of physical issues that she had been dealing with for a long time and couldn't seem to be healed of. As we prayed for her, the power of God hit her and she started yelling out that she could feel her body being healed, tears streaming down her face. Then we began to prophesy that God was going to heal every area of her life, not just the physical ailments. As we said that, her 
iPhone rang. It was her husband who had left her and was crying on the phone asking for forgiveness. God never just wants to heal one area of your life. He wants to heal every area of your life. We have a God that deals with us from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet constantly. He is constantly in control if we just yield to him. When I woke up, this dream hit me the hardest because, yes, God was healing trauma, but it was so much more. It was generational trauma. Generational trauma. Which God was speaking into that was being broken in the beginning of legacy for those who had been in the land of woundedness for a long time. That trauma can come down through our generational line. And that could be what's causing us to be bound up. It isn't something you even did. It's something that your ancestors did. And you're just in that generation, generational line. And it's hit you. Are you listening here? Um, Brother Chris Lynch, when I was sitting there doing praise and worship, God said, you are just like your father. You are truly your father's son. And I'm saying, watch the legacy. Pray over it. It was the breaking off of physical trauma and health issues mm -hmm. and also the connected areas of loss and emotional trauma. This healing was the breaking off of physical trauma and health issues and also the connected areas of loss and emotional trauma. It is a recompense in heart of God to bring wholeness and to dig deep and fully restore all that has been lost, not just heal the obvious. A lot of us just deal what we see on the surface. We never dig deep, dig down in there and dig out those demonic things that are causing you to act the way you are. And this is what God's going to do. He's going to dig deep. And he's going to get all that junk that's down in there. <clears throat> that's causing all these emotional things that you're going through. And he's going to get rid of them. And you're going to be finally free. Hang your trauma on the tree and leave behind the shipwreck. Since the last dream, which I had three days ago, I have been praying into this because I know it's something that God is doing globally right now. When I asked the Lord what we can do to be healed of trauma, he said these simple words, hang your trauma on the tree and walk away. I want to ask a question. How many of you, as I say in the last month, you're, you're thinking about things that happened a long time ago? And you're pondering, why did these things happen? And, you know, why did they turn out the way they did? That's the trauma that's deep down inside of you that God is bringing to the surface so he can deal with them and set you free of them. I can guarantee, guarantee about three quarters of people in this room have been dealing with that in the last couple months and you can't figure out because you never go there and all of a sudden it's come to you and you're wondering what is this all about we know tonight that that's God dealing with that trauma that's deep down inside causing you to be dormant in the things that God's calling you forth to do all right and God says just let me heal those emotional emotional outbursts that you have just let me have them. I have them up. Now let me deal with them. Let me set you free. All right. She said, God said these simple words, hang your trauma on a tree and walk away. For those, whom these for those whom these dreams have spoken to, this is for you hanging on the tree. You're hanging on the cross is what they're saying here. Every wound hurt, betrayal, and bitterness that boils down to trauma. Take it to the cross. The cross where the spotless lamb was crucified for us so that we don't have to live in this lesser existence and bondage our whole lives. There's a lot of you sitting in here tonight. You need to hang that stuff on the tree tonight. You don't need to carry it around with you any longer. God desires to free you up. 
He's a, he desires to set you free. I'm hearing that some of you in here, you have grandmothers who were messed up. And you're carrying their trauma. It came down through the generation line. And you're carrying their trauma. And if you know that you're one of those, God said, give it to him. And he's going to relieve you of it. And you'll never feel it ever again. I believe 2020, although it was a year of change, storms, and like walking through a mine, minefield, was actually a line in the sand. And God told us, I've drawn a line in the sand. It was actually a line in the sand year where God, God started calling the church up higher, and that's what he was doing. Above all these things that the enemy has normalized within the church for centuries. Well, everybody else does it, so it's no problem. It is a problem. Everybody else shouldn't be doing it either. And it doesn't matter what's going on in everybody else's life. It's your life. It's what's going on in your life. And you want to be set free from it, I hope. You don't want to carry that thing around with you any longer. So she says, so today, take your wounds and trauma and leave them at the cross. Forgive those whom you need to forgive. Let go of the questions you have. How many of us have a lot of questions? I know I do. I could fill a book with my questions, right? So let go of the questions you have. Let go of what you can't understand. Let Jesus redeem what you can't. Give him your past 2020 year, your present, and your future. God wants us to be free. He does not want us to be bound up in any way, shape, or form. Remember this morning, he said we're supposed to clear our environment around about us so that it doesn't cage us in and cause us to lose our anointing. And this is what God said in your night. Give me that trauma. Give me those circumstances that came up in your life and totally, de totally devastated you to the point where you pushed them down and pretended like they never existed. And they're still down in there. And God's saying it's time to get rid of them. So tonight, God wants you to get rid of all that trauma. He wants you to get rid of everything that, that has existed for way too many years. Colossians 2.14 says, He canceled out every legal violation we had on our record. He canceled out every legal violation we had on our record and the old arrest warrant that stood to indict us he erased it all our sins our stained soul he deleted it all and they cannot be retrieved everything we once were in Adam has been placed onto his cross and nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation let's read that scripture again because we are not walking out this scripture Jesus canceled out every legal violation we had on our record and the old arrest warrant that stood to indict us, period. He canceled all that out. He did, he re, he re, I'm sorry, he re, erased it all, our sins, our stained soul. He deleted it all and they cannot be retrieved. Don't go back and try to redig. <laughs> Don't go back and try to pull this junk up again. Everything we once were in Adam has been placed onto his cross and nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. Then she says, click, clack, back on track. As I have been writing this word out, I heard two things. I heard the sound of a train that was changing its tracks and the sound of wind blowing. Trauma tried to ground you and make your heart, you heart sick so that you wouldn't go anywhere or you'd be taken off course. But right now, God is changing your track and putting your trajectory back on course. I want you to think about this. How many of you are in here tonight with all the junk that's been going on in your life for the last two, three, maybe four months? Sometimes you just want to quit. You just want to throw up your hand and say, God, I can't see an end to any of this. And I don't understand why I'm going on. Well, there is an end to it. 
And if you'll just keep marching on, you're going to see why you kept going on. Why you did not let this trauma that keeps coming into your life destroy you and your walk with God. It's been a hard, it's been hard, this path that we've been on. And if you haven't been on this hard path, just I want you right now to take a big deep breath and say, thank you, God, and I don't want to go that way. It's been hard. It's been long. And it's been just squeezing the life out of, out of us. But God is saying he's ready to take that trauma out of our lives tonight. He no longer wants us bound and fettered by the wiles of the enemy. He wants you to give to him everything you know that is binding you up. The church, you know, God showed me today all the church really was is just to come in, f sing a few happy songs, get a little bit of a word, don't 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 just go too deep and let me go home because now I've done what you want me to do. I've given you your day. He told me, he said, the church does not want to change. They don't want to get rid of their sins. They don't want you to talk about their sins. They just want to go on with life as life is. So they don't have to deal with anything. You're going to have to deal with some things tonight. You're going to have to say, God, this trauma that's been... You're going to have to be honest first and say, there's been trauma in my life. There's things in my life that's just about destroyed me. And I don't want them there any longer. Period. And then let God take them. Somebody prophet gave a perfect, well, just said that God told them that this dispensation time, this harvest is a love walk. And we know that God has been really dealing with us about love. And really, if you listen to a lot of songs that are coming out right now, it's all about the love of Jesus, isn't it? I mean, they're just awesome songs. Remember when God told us about six months ago that we were going to be changing the way we sing and the, and the songs are going to be different? Well, they're different. Everybody that's out there writing songs is writing songs about Jesus, about the love of Jesus, and about getting the intimacy with Jesus. And this is where Jesus is at. He wants us to become so intimate with it. That's why we sing this. Today was different because God's dealing with the church, and he, wants, he just did a different thing. And, you know, some people just have a hard time with, uh, okay, Brandon Lake and, or Phil Wickham. You know, they're singing these slow songs now, these love songs. They're having a hard time with that because, after all, you're going to have to admit you don't know how to be intimate with God. And you get bored with a song. Well, get on board because the new songs are here. And if you really listen to, like Brandon Lake and Phil Wickham and Chris Tomlin right now, there's such an anointing in their voices when they sing that I really feel like angels come and sing through them. Have you heard that? It just sounds, sounds like angels take over and it's angels singing. But there's nobody that can change the tune of their voices like they do in the natural. It's a spiritual thing. It's an anointing from God. And he's trying to do a work through the praise and the worship. Even if you have been feeling lost or confused over which way to go, you will now have clarity and see true north again. This is a church's course correction from the enemy's diversions and back into the main game. T today is a day, you know, this, neat, this is Independence Day. This is a day that be be between this morning and this evening that God is setting us free from the bondage of the enemy and he's taken us into our, our rightful place in the heavenly realm and how many of you today you fought every devil in hell amen the enemy did not want you to enjoy your independence day but you know what he lost we gained and we have our independence back all right am I doing good Thank you. He knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. This is a church's course correction. I'm reading this again. From the enemy's diversions and back into the main game. If you've been out there in left field, God's gathering you in. He needs you in the inner field. He needs you in the inner chamber of his heart. Where he can use you to go out there and minister to the lost and the dying. All right. Get your fresh wind. You will suddenly feel the momentum and unction to move forward where you felt stuck and without options. 
you will suddenly see the X marks, the spot on the map you couldn't see before. Hallelujah. <laughs> Open up my spiritual eyes. I want to see that mark, right? Come on. Now it's time to get your fresh wind. Now it's time to feel the wind on your back again in the pleasure of the Lord where you had lost the joy in your connection. Now. Now. Not tomorrow, but right now, tonight. God wants to do that to each one of us. Over the next few months, look for the encounters that remove the burdens from your shoulders and cause rivers of living water to flow out of you again. Over the next few months, look for the encounters that remove the burdens from your shoulders and cause rivers of living water to flow out of you again. To those who have been tormented by thoughts of suicide, last but not least, I want to speak to those who have been tormented by thoughts of suicide, especially since last year. I felt strongly that, strongly that I needed to share this because there are going to be a few people who after reading this word will get delivered from this spirit of death that is trying to destroy them. You are going to see clearly and suddenly realize God has a future and a hope for you beyond the heartache you have experienced. And sometimes I think suicide thoughts can come in a lot of different forms. Not that you want to kill yourself, thoughts, but thoughts that you're finished. That God is, isn't going to use you no more. All kind of thoughts like that. God wants to rid you of all this trauma in your life tonight. He wants to set you totally and completely free from the bondage that the enemy has had you in. And you know, some of you have been coming to this church for a long time. I watched you from where you're at to go down, and then I saw you rise, I saw you go down, and I saw you rise, I saw you go down. I want to see you get up tonight, and I don't want to ever see you down again. I didn't say your troubles were going to leave you. I did not say that. But they don't have to take you down where you can't get back up again. God never, never means any trial and tribulation to keep us down. They are to strengthen us, to, to place integrity inside of us and make us the strong vessels that we need to be to get out there and face the, fight, face the devil that's out there waiting for us. He's just waiting for us. And he's going to try to take you out. How strong are you, really? I don't know about some of you, but some of the battles I've been fighting this week, I think, God, <laughs> I need more strength. Because I'm not as strong as I thought I was. I'm going to tell you, the higher you climb, the bigger the devils, the harder the fight. But you have to fight. I like told little Isaiah, you have to fight to get where you want to go. Are you content where you're at? Then the devil's not going to bother you because he knows you're not going to fight. Are you really wanting to go all the way with God? To receive your prize at the end of the race? Then get ready for a fight. But God said that he would fight our battles for us, right? He said he would send legions of angels to keep us safe. So all we have to do is keep our eyes on a prize, do the things God has called us forth to do, and let God take care of everything else. Only do what he's telling you to do. You might want to go out there and get a gun and shoot everybody. But God is saying, be still. Be still. You say, God, chain me, chain me to the wall then. Because this piece of flesh wants more flesh. <laughs> you know what? Isn't that right? Come on. But if God is saying, be still, then we have to be still. And if he's saying, speak, then we have to speak. But we have to speak what he tells us to speak, not but what our mind and our flesh wants to speak. God is taking care of all things in our lives if we can trust him and believe him. Remember, God said he knew everything we were going to go through. It's, book in, it's written in our land's book of life. So wherever you're at right now, tonight, God knew you was going to be at this point. You know, whether you're happy, whether you're in trauma or whatever, God knew you were going to get there. And God isn't up there laughing and saying, just watch him fall. He isn't doing that. He's up there saying, come on, you can do this. 
You can walk through this storm because I'm with you. I'm by your side and I'm holding your hand. Doesn't matter how tired you are of the situation. Do you understand that God is more tired of it than you are? And he's setting you free. We just don't like how he's doing it. We have to quit looking at how he's doing it and just saying that he is doing it. And we are on the freedom train, you know, as she talked about. And we are the winners and not the losers. I want to pray this over you tonight. Trauma, leave them now in Jesus' name. Spirit of death and suicide, get off them now in Jesus' name. Receive this right now. Trauma, I curse you and command you to leave every person that's here this night. You are a violation and must go from every space and recess of their lives. Thank you, Father. Now, see, if I was somebody that wrote the Courts of Heaven books, I would know how to do that to get you, you set free from all that. He's in violation, God said. So therefore, he has to go. Is that the way it goes? He's in violation, so therefore it has to go. Would you like to, Brett and, and Aaron, would you like to go up here and, and do a prayer over the people? All right. Um, it said here that he's in violation, and, and he can't do what he's doing. So are you two want to go up here and stand and just say a prayer over you? And I want each one of you to receive what they say. They, they both go to the courtrooms. They both write books about the courtrooms. They know all about the courtrooms. I just know they're there. I do go there myself, but I go in my own way. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to sue the enemy because we've already been forgiven by the blood, but he's kept on doing stuff. <laughs> Because a lot of trauma left, and we were doing okay, but he came back in and through a back door. So God, we just thank you right now. God, we open up your courts right now of retribution against the enemy. God, we hold up all evidence of every spirit that's come against your children, every spirit of suicide, trauma, backbiting, bitterness, illegitimate control. Every one of those spirits, God, we thank you that they're set in your court for judgment, and God, we sue every defilement, every spirit, everything, every sequence of events, God, we want it brought to nothing right now. Any willful agreement, we've already repented before you. And God, we're asking that your verdict is weighty and that your verdict even goes into the throes of hell yeah. to retrieve every lost part of us, any part of our wills and desires that are in hell. God, we ask that you have a verdict that goes deeper and brings all things up. And God, we ask for the testimony of your light that sees the extent of everything. And we ask that all accounts are settled before you. Okay, Brett, you, you want to do your part now. Father, we thank you that you are the most high and that there is none other like you. We thank you, God, for your heart over each one of us. God, your character has gone before you. And God, you have made known to us that your desire and your will is to heal, to deliver and cleanse us, to restore us back to you in the fullness as it is written. Father, we agree with you in this. We thank you, God, that your sovereign hand can move forward upon each one of your people to bring to full fruition the words that you have spoke through your servant, through this teaching. Father, we thank you and agree with your perfect will in heaven. We thank you, God, that when you set a plan in motion, who can reverse it? We thank you, God, that your angelic host is already dispatched to enforce the verdicts that you have rendered in heavenly places upon Mount Zion, that your word goes forth, God, and does not return to you void. We thank you for your promise that it is yes and amen, that the enemy has no legal right to hold, to bind, or to hinder in any way, shape, or form, which you have purposed and desired for each one of us, God. Total healing from all trauma, total deliverance, God, 
and total healing. In Jesus' name, amen. And the verdict, God already put the verdict out there, and this is the verdict. Church, trauma is not your future. You are free. In Jesus' name, amen. And we thank you, God, the furthest extent of that is paid back. All the payback and restitution, we claim it, and we put restraints against the enemy, and we charge angels for not letting any trespass of Satan go ever again. It will be immediately punished.